Upon arrival in the north, Daenerys, Jon, and their combined forces marched through Wintertown on their way to Winterfell. The townspeople cast her many suspicious looks, and Jon reminds her that northerners have a long-established distrust of outsiders. Immediately following this exchange, Drogon and Rhaegal fly overhead, startling the townspeople and causing Daenerys to smile proudly. In Winterfell's courtyard, Jon introduces her to Sansa, and the two women exchange a civil but tense greeting. Later, Daenerys is seated at the high table in the castle's great hall along with Jon and Sansa. Tyrion attempts to calm the slightly hostile northern lords by telling them that the largest army ever seen has been assembled, but Sansa asks how she is supposed to feed such a force along with two dragons. When she asks what dragons even eat, Daenerys replies, whatever they want. While inspecting the preparations for the coming battle, Daenerys remarks to Jon upon Sansa's apparent dislike for her. While Jon assures her that Sansa wasn't overly fond of him when they were growing up, Daenerys rebuffs him by saying that they don't need to like each other, but she will be respected as queen. Several Dothraki approach the pair and mention that the dragons haven't been eating as much as they normally do. Daenerys and Jon come upon the two dragons in a bone pit outside Winterfell's walls. She mounts Drogon, planning to take him for a ride, and suggests that Jon mount Rhaegal. After much trepidation, Jon does so, and the dragons take the pair on a wild ride over the snow-covered landscape. Daenerys being somewhat pleased with Jon's almost instant connection with her dragon. Eventually, they land near a waterfall in an area where Jon used to hunt as a youth. Away from all concerns about the coming battle, Daenerys and Jon share an intimate moment. Daenerys and Jorah later encounter Samuel Tarly in Winterfell's library. After praising him for realizing the secret behind Dragon Glass and curing Jorah of his grayscale, she asks if there is anything she can do to repay him. Sam jokingly asks for a pardon for stealing books from the Citadel and for taking his family's ancestral sword without permission. Upon hearing his surname is, Tali, Daenerys realizes that he is, in fact, Randall Tali's son, and proceeds to tell him the difficult truth that she executed his father and brother for rebelling against her. Sam is speechless for a few moments before asking to leave the library. When Jaime arrives at Winterfell, Daenerys is once again seated at the high table with Jon and Sansa. The two women harshly berate the king's lair for his past actions and question whether his loyalty to their cause is genuine. Only when Brienne vouches for Jaime does Sansa trust him, and Daenerys allows his sword to be returned to him. Later, Daenerys speaks privately with Sansa, addressing some of the thorny political issues involved in their alliance. Sansa is afraid Daenerys has ulterior motives and that because Jon loves her, he will do stupid things for love. Daenerys assures Sansa this is not the case and confesses her love for Jon, explaining she has had only one goal, retaking the Iron Throne, until she met Jon and now she's in the North helping him fight the Night King and the Army of the Dead. Although a greater understanding appears to develop between the two women, Sansa remains firm in her conviction that the Northerners will never truly accept an outsider as their ruler again, and bluntly asks Daenerys what her plans for the North are once the dead have been defeated. The awkward moment is interrupted by Maester Walken announcing the arrival of Theon and his men. When the survivors from Eastwatch bring the news that the Army of the Dead will be at Winterfell's gates within a day, preparations inside the castle begin to move forward at a feverish pace. Daenerys meets with all the prominent commanders and heads of houses to discuss battle strategy, and later finds herself in the crypts with Jon. While standing in front of Lyanna Stark's statue, Daenerys recounts how everybody told her Rhaegar was decent and kind but that he kidnapped and raped Lyanna. However, Jon reveals Rhaegar did not rape Lyanna and they were in love. He tells Daenerys the truth about his parentage and she is stunned. She immediately questions the validity of the story. When Jon assures her that it's true, she realizes that Jon actually has a better claim to the throne than she does. Before either can discuss the matter further, a horn sounds three times to signal the arrival of the army of the dead. Daenerys and Jon watch with Drogon and Rhaegal from a distance as the Dothraki charge the army of the dead, but when the Dothraki are slaughtered, Daenerys breaks away from Jon's plan to wait for the Night King and attacks the army of the dead with dragonfire. Daenerys and Jon's visibility is cut off when the White Walkers summon a blizzard, however. High in the skies above Winterfell, Daenerys and Drogon are suddenly attacked by the Night King on Viserion, but she is able to evade him. Daenerys and Drogon later knock the Night King off Viserion, and Daenerys has Drogon burn the Night King, though to no avail. 
they escape as the Night King hurls an ice spear at Drogon. When Jon is surrounded by newly risen whites, Daenerys saves him with Drogon, burning through whites and creating a path for Jon to rush into Winterfell to help Bran and stop the Night King. She urges Jon to go and after he runs to stop the Night King, whites climb onto Drogon, and Daenerys falls off while Drogon flies away. Daenerys takes hold of a discarded sword and slays a few whites who come her way or Jorah's. However, she is also protected by Jorah, who dies defending her, leaving Daenerys sobbing while Drogon wraps around them after the army of the dead falls. After the battle, which saw a living victory, Daenerys mourns the dead outside Winterfell, lighting a pyre. She kisses the dead Jorah's forehead and whispers something to him. Daenerys later celebrates at the feast inside Winterfell. Tormund makes a toast to Daenerys, to the Dragon Queen, and Daenerys stands up herself, toasting Arya Stark as the hero of Winterfell. However, despite her initially celebratory mood and the smiles she exchanges with Jon, Daenerys's mood grows downcast when Tormund begins to praise Jon and she finds herself lonely and envious over Jon's popularity with the wildlings, looking around at the groups of people around her. Daenerys finds Jon in his chambers that night and they kiss, beginning to undress, before Jon stops himself due to learning of their relation. Daenerys laments that she wishes Jon never told her about his true identity because otherwise, she'd be happy. She is afraid others will press his claim and take the throne from her. Jon tries to assure her he doesn't want the throne. Daenerys tells Jon it doesn't matter what he wants or how many times he swears fealty to her, he didn't want to be king in the north either. Jon gets on one knee before her and says that he'll refuse the crown because she is his queen. Daenerys begs Jon not to tell anyone else about his parentage, fearing that it will destroy them. Jon insists he must tell his sisters because he owes them the truth about who he is, certain his sisters will keep it secret, everything will work out, and they can all live together. However, Daenerys believes the only way they can live together is if Jon keeps his identity secret. Daenerys leads a war council for her resumed campaign against Cersei Lannister for the Iron Throne. As her fleet is sailing back to Dragonstone, she rides Drogon next to Rhaegal, when suddenly Rhaegal is shot by three bolts before plummeting into Blackwater Bay. Euron's iron fleet reveals itself from behind Dragonstone's rocks and tries to take down Daenerys and Drogon, but are unable to do as they pull back. Euron instead targets Daenerys's fleet, destroying it and capturing Missandei in the process. On Dragonstone, Daenerys becomes tempted to storm King's Landing. Daenerys, Tyrion, Varys, and Grey Worm parley with Cersei outside the gates of King's Landing, where Cersei executes Missandei in front of them. Back at Dragonstone, a morning Daenerys refuses to eat and becomes increasingly angered at the rule of House Lannister, as well as becoming increasingly paranoid that her claim to the throne is losing legitimacy. However, her fears are found to be true when she learns through Tyrion that Varys has plotted to betray her and crown Jon in her place, after learning the truth of his parentage from Sansa. Daenerys has Varys brought out onto the shores of Dragonstone, where she sentences him to die by having Drogon burn him, just as she promised him earlier if he were ever to betray her. Later, when Daenerys and Jon talk, she reminds him of her warning to him about telling Sansa the truth of who he was. Daenerys says Sansa is as responsible for Varys's death as she is. Jon attempts to reassure Daenerys that he doesn't want the crown, having also told Varys he wouldn't take it. Daenerys laments that Jon has the love of the people while she does not, she only has fear. In an effort to compensate, Jon tells Daenerys he loves her and that she'll always be his queen. Daenerys kisses him and Jon gives in to the kiss, but breaks it off due to their blood ties. Daenerys accepts this and resigns herself to being feared. Tyrion consults with Daenerys, the latter of whom is now ordering Grey Worm and the Unsullied to sack King's Landing. Tyrion is strongly against it saying that the citizens of the city are not Daenerys's enemy and are innocent. Daenerys counters that the slaves in Marine turned against their masters and liberated themselves. Tyrion responds that the small folk are afraid of Cersei because Cersei will punish any rebellious acts. Daenerys says they are hostages in a tyrant's grip, and Tyrion begs her not to burn the city, or thousands of children will die. Daenerys counters that Cersei is using mercy as a weakness against them but Cersei is wrong. Mercy is their strength, her mercy for the future generations of Westeros, not those in the present. In a last-ditch effort to get through to Daenerys, Tyrion bargains one last time. 
wait for the city to surrender and call off the attack when the people ring the city's bells, indicating the full, unconditional surrender of Circe and her army. Reluctantly, Daenerys agrees. Before Tyrion leaves, she informs her hand that Jaime was caught by her men trying to get past their lines. She warns him that the next time he fails her, it will be his very last. Daenerys attacks Euron's Iron Fleet atop Drogon as the Battle of King's Landing begins, sinking the fleet and destroying the Scorpions. Daenerys then attacks the Scorpions stationed across the walls of King's Landing, destroying them all, preventing the Lannister soldiers from targeting Drogon. Daenerys destroys the gate and its walls that the Golden Company guards, killing many of the sellswords from the debris that falls upon them. This allows the Dothraki, Unsullied, the Northern and the Vale armies to destroy the remaining sellsword contingent and charge into the city. Overwhelmed, the Lannister soldiers and civilians surrender, ringing the city's bells. However, Daenerys, consumed by grief and anger, instead goes on a rampage, using Drogon to burn King's Landing. The dragon fire also sets off the wildfire caches placed around the city by her father, the Mad King, years ago, leaving the city in ashes. At the same time, her armies, taking their lead from Daenerys, proceed to run riot through the city, killing any Lannister soldiers and civilians they can get their hands on. Thousands of the surrendered soldiers and innocent civilians are killed in the firestorm across the city, either from Drogon, Daenerys's soldiers, or collapsing buildings and debris. After the battle, Daenerys orders the captured Lannister soldiers to be executed. Daenerys later stands over the carnage and ashes of King's Landing, as she is cheered on by the Dothraki and guarded by the Unsullied. She delivers a speech to her victorious armies, proclaiming that they gave her the Seven Kingdoms and, liberated, the people of King's Landing but declares their war is not over. She will continue to, liberate, the rest of the world as they did for King's Landing, and will, break the wheel, to free it from those whom she perceives as tyrants. Tyrion approaches Daenerys, who confronts him about freeing his brother. She becomes angry after he retorts that she slaughtered a city, and tosses away his hand of the queen pin. In return, Daenerys has him arrested. Jon visits an imprisoned Tyrion, who tries to convince a conflicted Jon on what Daenerys has become. He understands Jon loves her, he loves her too, and knows he is asking Jon to do a terrible thing, but it is also the right thing. Tyrion then stresses that Daenerys is now the greatest threat to the people. Walking through the charred remains of the throne room, seeing what she saw in her vision in the House of the Undying years ago, with the Iron Throne the only piece completely intact, Daenerys ascends in awe and reaches her hand out to touch one of the snow-covered blades. Before she can sit down, Jon enters and she recounts to him the conquest of her ancestor Aegon and how he had the Iron Throne built. Jon confronts her about the many atrocities she committed during the battle. However, she justifies her actions and, despite Jon's pleas for her do so, she refuses to forgive Tyrion and the people of King's Landing. He begs Daenerys to make the people see that they made a mistake, and to make them understand. Unswayed by Jon's reasoning, Daenerys asserts that they can't hide behind small mercies and the world they need cannot be built by those loyal to the Old One. Jon desperately argues that their world must be one of mercy. Daenerys assures him that she is building a good world. Distressed, John asks her how she knows it's good and Daenerys confidently asserts that she knows what is good, trying to convince John that he does too. Upset. John is unconvinced and asks about everybody else who thinks they know what is good, to which Daenerys responds, they don't get to choose. Daenerys embraces John and makes clear her desire for John to help her build the new world she envisages and urges him that this is how they break the wheel. John tells Daenerys that she is his queen, now and always. As the two of them share a final kiss, Jon thrusts a dagger into her heart. He catches Daenerys as she falls, blood escaping her nose and mouth, a look of confused heartbreak draws upon her face. As an anguish Jon holds Daenerys, he grieves over her. Drogon notices Jon laying Daenerys down on the ground and approaches them. Drawing closer, he snarls at Jon before trying to nudge his mother awake. Upon realizing that she is dead, Drogon, roars in rage and grief at Jon before unleashing a jet of fire that melts the Iron Throne. He then carries off Daenerys's body with his claws, flying far off into the distance, never to be seen again. With House Targaryen legally extinct, the Great Council of 305 AC decide that the Seven Kingdoms will be an elective monarchy under Brandon I. Through this elective monarchy, Tyrion fulfills Daenerys's wish of breaking the wheel, 
while John is exiled to the Night's Watch in order to avoid a war between the Unsullied and his supporters.